Welcome to part three of my Turbo M10 build. We left off in the last episode where I ran into the problem of uh, this stud doesn't clear the baffle for the uh, crankcase breather. I'm going to try painting it because that would be the ideal scenario if it works. And I have a couple more of these laying around if I break this one. So I'm willing to take one for the team and see if this idea works. So this actually seems to be working pretty well. And as I'm doing it, when I'm setting this thing back on here, the uh, extra ARP assembly lube is making a little mark where it's still contacting. And then I know to tap it some there. And then just repeat the process over and over. And hopefully this is going to work. It's not like pulling up the sides, so those should still seal pretty nicely. It hasn't cracked yet. You can see the, uh, the little bit of assembly lube that's telling me where to smack. I think this is definitely probably the the best way to do it that I can think of. I'm glad I gave it a chance because I think this will actually be better for oil consumption versus uh, drilling a hole. And now, look at that. Sits on there perfectly now. Now it's time to adjust all the valves. And uh, just as a quick reminder, during the uh, head assembly video, I talked about it a little bit, but it needs to be set up so that when you pull down on the eccentric adjustment, it's making the clearance tighter. Uh, so if any are adjusted by pushing forward to make it tighter, those are actually backwards and they need to be flipped around. Seven thousandths is the goal here, so I'm going to be using this feeler gauge. It helps if uh, they're slightly bent so that they can get between the uh, eccentric and the top of the valve a little easier. A lot of people say that you can just tighten the uh, clamping nut here uh, just by feel, but I actually prefer to torque it to eight foot pounds. Uh, and let me show you how I do that. There isn't enough room in here, especially on some of the other ones, to actually get a socket in here. So I came up with a technique for making this work. So all you have to do is put a uh, 10 millimeter internal hex bit on your torque wrench, and then you can use that combined with a uh, low profile combination wrench and then aim it at 90 degrees and that will provide the equivalent torque of having a regular 10 millimeter socket on the uh, end of the torque wrench but it has to be at 90 degrees it can't be like this otherwise it's gonna mess with the uh, the lever length and throw off the torque specification you can see why this is necessary because some of these nuts are way too close to other stuff to be able to get any kind of access with a socket uh, and I know a lot of people don't have like those offset dog bone sockets uh, and myself included so so I have these four adjusted so far from the uh, top dead center position here. So now I get need to go ahead and turn the engine over so that I can get the other four valves. And this is a good time to mention that some folks uh, will do uh, the old trick where you put some Play-Doh or some clay on the tops of your uh, cylinders in the valve relief pockets there if you have them. And then see what the, uh, what the valve to piston clearance is. And uh, I think that's a great idea, but uh, for this particular engine, I'm not super worried about it. Uh, that could bite me in the ass later when I go to a hotter cam. But for now, uh, I'm not concerned about it. So as I turn the engine over, I'm just going to be uh, listening for any unusual noises and feeling for any kind of resistance at all. And I'm going to go ahead and pull out the spark plugs to do this just so that uh, I can feel it as clearly as possible if there's something wrong. Everything felt nice and smooth as I was turning it over. No hang-ups or uh, binds or anything like that, uh, which is great news. And now I've got these four valves nice and loose. So I can go ahead and adjust those. All right, they should be good to go. I uh, set them once, turn it over several times, check them again, turn it over again, and then uh, check them a third time. And they are all at 7,000ths now and it looks like they're gonna stay there. 
but I'm still going to double check them after about, I don't know, the first few hundred miles, uh, probably after the first uh, break in oil change there. This is the oil filter that I'll be running. It's actually, uh, if you look it up, it's not going to come up as something that is a stock replacement filter for a 2002. I actually had to do a lot of research with a, a friend of mine that uh, I trust, and we figured out that this one has you know, a very, very similar bypass pressure to the stock oil filter, and it's just a little bit shorter in this direction. And the reason that I need it is because I'm actually running a sandwich adapter plate for the oil cooler, and that pushes the oil filter closer to the steering box to the point where a stock height filter is chafing, and that's not going to work. Those uh, 1288 filters are the ones that I figured did work pretty well. Obviously, I can't recommend that other people use them because it's not, you know, it's not an OEM part. But, but I can tell you that I've been running that setup with the oil cooler and the shorter filter for since before I even had this engine turbocharged. And I have, you know, been beating on it mercilessly and having a, a, all kinds of fun with it. And I haven't had a single issue with with anything. So... Uh, I'm going to stick with these filters. Next thing I'm going to be doing is putting a little bit of oil into this thing, just like a quart or two, uh, so that I can turn it over by hand and verify that the oil pump is picking up oil and distributing it throughout the engine. So to do that, I'm going to have to prime the oil filter with a little bit of the cheapo stuff. Oh yeah, and uh, don't forget to uh, install an oil pressure sensor in the port, otherwise uh, you're just going to make a big mess everywhere when you're right about to paint stuff. That's a good sign though. Well, that's life affirming. We got some oil pressure. Now I'm just going to throw the valve cover on for the time being. Keep any crap out of here. I named this engine Tired Iron, by the way, because there's kind of an interesting story behind this block. And these blocks are pretty legendary. You know, they held, if you're watching this video, you probably already know the lore about them. But uh, they managed to hold like 1,580 horsepower or something like that uh, when they were used in Formula One. But anyways, th this one is interesting to me because it was, I pulled it out of retirement. A guy that I had bought parts from in the past actually had this block and he was using it as a wine rack. Uh, you know, four bottles of wine, and one in each bore. And uh, it doesn't have a VIN. So... Uh, no idea if I could track down where exactly it originally came from or how far it's traveled. So that's kind of the joke. Just drug some sleepy old iron out of the retirement home and now I'm going to make it hold some horsepower again. About three times what it was, uh, what it was originally making. If I'm right, we'll see what the dyno says someday. Now it's time to check the spark plug gap. Uh, in the old engine, I was running these uh, BPR6EYs, which are uh, the same as the new plugs that I got, but uh, they just have a, a V-groove electrode, which uh, I don't think makes much of a difference hardly at all, but apparently somebody did because they do produce them. So this time I'm going to be using uh, BPR6ESs, and these are pretty popular in the DSM community. So, I figure they should be more than enough for my application. Is there anything better than a fresh box of spark plugs? With their cute little individual boxes. I think these come out of the box at like 35 thousandths or something. Let's see. Uh, maybe just a hair tighter than that actually. No. Nah. Yeah, I'd say about 35 thousandths. Which, uh... Sounds like gravy to me.
Now, if this were like a stock rebuild or something and I was using stock ignition components, I would uh, gap these down to like, uh, I think the range is around 28 thousandths or so. But since I'm using a much more modern ignition system, I'm cool with running 35 thousandths. But I may actually end up gapping these down more as I turn the boost up. So they're just going to be in there to keep crap out of the cylinders for now because uh, I'm going to have to pull them back out when I prime it with the starter when it's in the car to get the oil all circulated again prior to startup. But if I were installing them right now, I'd be torquing them to 18 foot-pounds. Next thing to do here is to shine a light in each one of the uh, stud holes for the manifolds on both sides because on some of the uh, earlier heads these are actually open to the inside of the head casting and if you don't put some type of sealant on them like motorcycle case sealant or RTV or something then they're gonna weep oil so this is a later head the 1.8 from an E30 and these are not open to the inside of the casting so on the exhaust side on this particular head I'm just gonna put some anti-seize on them before I run them into the head but on the opposite side several of these go all the way through the casting and again you know they'll leak oil everywhere unless I put some sealant on the threads including on uh, these two little guys here that's another difference that you'll notice with the later stuff is uh, this is like a mount for, I don't know, some type of EFI related stuff. But on the old heads, there's this mating surface, which is for the mechanical fuel pump. And uh, I just have a uh, block plate right there. But for this one, I'm just going to use like some flush uh, set screws with uh, some motorcycle case sealant. I'm a big fan of these uh, low profile intake manifold nuts. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get the, uh, the seams with the head and the chain covers taped off and then I'm gonna paint the block. I know I'm a little bit of a weirdo because you know a lot of people paint the block you know first or whatever but uh, I actually like to do it at the end so that's what I'm gonna do. Now I need to fill a couple holes left in the block here. I've got an M14 plug with a new crush washer for this side. And I have one for this side as well. Uh, on some engines there's going to be a little uh, fitting here that, that can be used to uh, move coolant to the intake manifold or wherever you need it to move. But in my case uh, I just have no need for it. So I'm going to plug them both. Twenty foot pounds feels pretty good. Twenty five foot pounds feels pretty good on this side. As long as the uh, crush washers are smashed a little bit, it should be fine. Earlier, I was in a little bit of a rush uh, getting the uh, timing chain cover stuff into place, and I actually forgot to put the front alternator bracket and the uh, lifting eye onto the front of the engine here. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that and then torque these two bolts that I'm messing with back to 19 foot-pounds and then there's a uh, 17 millimeter as well on the side. Once again, I uh, can't really find a good reference for this one but uh, I think about 25 foot-pounds should be sufficient. This thing's looking pretty good. I still have to torque the uh, crank pulley, but I can't do that until I put a flywheel on this thing to lock it in place so that uh, I can torque that thing properly. Just for fun, I'm going to throw the uh, exhaust manifold and the turbo on it just to see how it looks.
couple more things I wanted to point out. Um, I went ahead and posted my build videos on uh, the 2002 forum uh, just to get some opinions from some guys with more experience than me. And a couple of uh, good tips were brought to my attention, including with the uh, head studs here, these two on the, uh, the back side, they'll actually tend to leak oil if you don't put a little bit of RTV uh, on the interior bore here. Um, so that may end up becoming an issue in the future. I'm not really sure uh, I'm just gonna send it like this and if I run into problems I'll fix it when I get to it and then another interesting point that was brought to my attention is that uh, the studs the torque spec given for these you know the 90 foot pounds which I torque these to uh, about 81 foot pounds so a little bit less uh, but guys were saying that they ran into problems with the uh, the rocker bores getting warped because the the specification given for those ARP head studs is based on the strength of the stud, not the strength of the material that it's clamping. And, you know, obviously aluminum's a lot softer. Uh, it's not worth me messing with at this point, but something to consider. Uh, guys were saying maybe 65 foot pounds should be plenty sufficient. Something to keep in mind is those uh, those rocker bores could get warped. I'm not really sure. I guess I should reveal what's hanging out in the background here uh, waiting to get introduced to the channel. And I'll tell you what, if you're a fan of the roundel, I think you're going to be a fan of this. So let me show you what's going on under here. I am really excited to get this thing back on the road. I cannot wait to hear it fire up. It does need a decent amount of work, and that's all going to be in an upcoming video here. And the uh, installation video for the M10 Turbo build into the 2002 is coming up as well. So make sure to subscribe for both those if you're a BMW fan. And there's a lot more stuff on the horizon. And I hope that this video helps you out with your M10 Turbo build or your M10 High Performance build. Uh, I know it would have been helpful for me to have this, so I just wanted to share that with everybody. Thanks for watching, guys.